Eating many meals, and I include snacks as a meal, will greatly affect the amount of cavities you get. I'm Rick Buck, and I've been a dentist for 14 years. I like to cover all things oral health related, so subscribe if you have teeth and care about health. In this video, I'm going to show you what happens in your mouth when you eat so that you can understand a little more about how cavities are formed. Let's start by explaining the bacteria in your mouth. You see, you have so much bacteria in your mouth. For example, take a look at this slide of plaque in my mouth. Now you can see this is how much plaque builds up in my mouth when I don't brush for 24 hours hours. What's important is all of that plaque has a lot of bacteria in it and lots of different types of bacteria. But what you may not realize is that some of that bacteria is good and some of that bacteria is bad. The best way to avoid cavities is to keep your bad bacteria levels low while your good bacteria levels stay high. Well soon I'm going to show you, not just tell you, why and how those bacteria levels can be kept in the good bacteria level range. So let me break down the basics for you. So when you eat, especially foods with lots of sugar and carbs, the bacteria in your mouth also eat that food and their byproduct is very acidic. Let me show you this small experiment that I did. I test the pH of my mouth by dipping a pH strip in my saliva to get a baseline level of what the pH of my spit and saliva in my mouth is. You can see the pH in my mouth is close to neutral and is around 7.25 when I match up the strip to the pH color index. Now, just to keep me honest, I have my watch there so you can see the time is 1021. Then what I do is I pour a glass of water and saturate it with sugar. And at 1022, I rinse vigorously with the sugary water mix. Then at 1024, I take the pH again of my saliva and you can see it starts to go down just a tad. And then I repeat this every two minutes. So at 1026, you can see it has dropped a little bit more of the pH, which means it's getting a little more acidic. At 1028, it has slightly dropped a little more, but at 1032, the pH has dropped to about 5.5 to 5.75. And that's a big difference in pH. So what that tells you is the plaque and the bacteria in all my mouth was taking that sugar that I ate and it's making a byproduct that's very acidic in my mouth. And this is all going somewhere, so just stick with me. But by 1044, so like 20 minutes from when I rinsed my saliva, it has returned somewhere close to that pH pH that I started at, that neutral pH. Now, hopefully you're getting some of the story, but this isn't the whole story. You see, this is the pH of my whole mouth. If we were to take the pH of just the plaque that you saw adhering to my teeth, you would see that the pH is much lower in the plaque after eating. You see, the plaque biofilm traps a lot of the acidity that the bacteria is producing within the plaque itself. Some of it escapes into my whole mouth to make it acidic, but the plaque area is even more acidic than my whole mouth is. This acidity then starts a process called demineralization. Once the acidity touching my teeth drops below a pH of 5.5, the teeth really start to demineralize. So let me explain. The surface of your enamel is made of lots of little minerals that make the tooth extremely hard and resistant to wear and abrasion. However, whenever and wherever your tooth is attacked by an acidity level of a pH lower than 5.5, the tooth surface starts to release those minerals in a process called demineralization. This now leaves your tooth in a weakened state. This pH of 5.5 is called the critical pH. Now, hopefully you've got things. So we got bacteria in your mouth, especially on the plaque that adhere to your teeth when you eat, it takes the food that you made, especially the sugar and carbs, and makes an acidic nature right around that tooth, which then demineralizes your tooth. It loses minerals and leaves it in a weakened state. Now, this demineralization is temporary if two things happen. If you supply the tooth with minerals it lost, and if the pH buffers back to a normal level. So buffering the pH means that you're taking the pH 
and you're just making it more neutral again. So your saliva does both of these objectives, meaning your saliva supplies your tooth with the minerals it lost and it neutralizes the pH or buffers the pH in your mouth and in the plaque. However, if your saliva doesn't do that, if your pH stays that low long enough time, demineralization will turn the tooth into this mushy matrix that bacteria can now invade and further the process. This process is called a cavity tooth decay or caries. So that is just the start of the process. So if the demineralization progresses far enough and is excessive, it shows up as dark spots on an x-ray and in the mouth, it can become dark and sticky to sharp objects. So we as dentists can diagnose them with a small tiny instrument called an explorer. So now that you know the process, let me explain what increases and decreases your chances of getting a cavity. And all of my favorite dental products are in affiliate links below this video. Sugar is the main culprit in the process of tooth decay and caries. If you eat very low levels of sugar, it is likely you won't get cavities regardless of how well you are taking care of your teeth. Why? Sugar is the quickest and easiest form of food for the bad bacteria in your mouth. But it's even worse than that. You now know the more sugar you eat, the more acidic your plaque becomes. But the more acidic your plaque becomes, the more the good bacteria dies. And one of the main good bacteria in your mouth is called Streptococcus mitis, and it tries to colonize the plaque with good bacteria. So then if you're eating lots of sugar, the good bacteria dies at a higher rate and doesn't survive. So the more bad decay forming bacteria like Streptococcus mutans, not Streptococcus mitis, which is the good one, the more Streptococcus mutans thrives and populates. Before you know it, you have a lot higher levels of streptococcus mutans than normal and the cavity process becomes a downward spiral because with more bad bacteria, you're producing more acid, which means then again, less of the good bacteria is surviving and then the things just speed up exponentially in this downward spiral. There are some lucky people that have very low levels of streptococcus mutans in general, which is why two people with the same diet and home care regimen and eating the same amount of sugar will have different amounts of cavities. But those are a few lucky people. This is why the best thing you can do for your teeth and for your general health in my opinion Opinion, is stop eating sugar or at least eat very low levels of sugar. I don't know if most people know this, but to make matters worse, eating sugar makes you more hungry too, which leads me to the next thing that causes people to get cavities more often. That is the amount of times in a day that you eat. Eating many meals, and I include snacks as a meal, will greatly affect the amount of cavities you get. So this diagram is called the Stefan curve. On this graph, you can see every time you eat, the pH of your plaque drops and goes back up as we looked at earlier. If you're always eating, the closer those drops in pH come to each other. This means your teeth never have the appropriate time to remineralize, so each demineralization attack becomes worse and you're never getting any recovery because you're eating so much and that bacteria is always keeping the pH low in the plaque. So anyway, this means your teeth spend a longer amount of time below the critical pH. And you know, the more time below the critical pH, the more likely a cavity forms. So now if you're snacking all day, then you are below that critical pH all day and your teeth are constantly in that demineralized state. You will very likely develop cavities and have plaque heavily populated by streptococcus mutans if you're always snacking and especially always snacking with sugar in the diet. And once again, that sugar in your diet will make you want to eat more because sugar makes you more hungry. Another thing that affects that Stefan curve is your saliva. The speed of this curve assumes you have an adequate amount of saliva to buffer and supply minerals to your tooth. However, if you have dry mouth, this is not the case. Your mouth will not buffer and your plaque will remain below the critical pH too much no matter if you're snacking or not. People with uncontrollable dry mouth 
will almost inevitably have problems with cavities. Some people try to drink lots of water with dry mouth, but it just doesn't do much because it doesn't have the same properties as your saliva, especially those good minerals. The best thing you can do with dry mouth is to use products that stimulate saliva right after you eat, like biotin rinse. Also, some people with dry mouth brush or rinse right after they eat. You have to be careful to brush lightly right after you eat because your teeth are in a demineralized state, like I explained earlier. And you can wear down your teeth more easily and you can thin the enamel fast and develop these notches near your gums if you're brushing too aggressively, especially right after eating in your demineralized weakened state. But if you have dry mouth, it is worth it to brush after you eat. Once again, just remember to brush very lightly and don't use abrasive toothpastes. So the reason why you want to brush after you eat, especially with dry mouth, is to remove that plaque so it doesn't create as much acidity and the fluoride also helps in the toothpaste. To explain that, we go again to the Stefan curve. The Stefan curve is also altered by fluoride. Remember how your tooth remineralizes with the minerals in your saliva? Well, your saliva, if you use toothpaste with fluoride in it, contains fluoride, so your teeth will actually remineralize with fluoride instead of some of those other minerals that it would have remineralized with. The thing about fluoride is it's a much stronger mineral in your teeth. So when the teeth remineralize with fluoride, instead of having a critical pH of 5.5, the critical pH drops to 4.5. So your saliva acidity has to drop to a pH of 4.5 to cause that demineralization. And so the plaque in your mouth and the bad bacteria have to be working double time to create the acidity necessary to start tooth decay. This is why communities with fluoridated water have less cavities. Some people try and avoid fluoride in the water because of possible adverse side effects. I think this is completely understandable, but if you're going to be that health conscious, you have to be completely health conscious and not just pick and choose your health battles. What this means and what I'm getting at is you have to do something like give up sugar. Our ancestors didn't use fluoride, but they also didn't consume as much sugar by magnitudes of what we eat today. The good news is you should give up sugar for many health benefits. So as far as fluoride in the water, there was this community and they gave up fluoride in their water. Well, what they realized is everybody started getting tons of cavities and it cost them billions in dental care. And so they eventually had to pay for that water to be and pay for all the machinery to put the fluoride back into the water. My point is you can give up fluoride in water, but you have to also give up the amounts of sugar that are completely unnatural that we're eating today. One important thing about cavities is how long the process takes. The thing with tooth decay is that it only needs 24 hours to start, although most of the time it will take longer. So that is why brushing and flossing is normally recommended twice a day. It just gives no chance for the cavity to start if you're brushing, you know, once every 12 or however many hours. You should watch my video on the best daily brushing and flossing routine. The results are stunning and I will post that at the end of this video. My favorite dental products are in affiliate links below this video too. But as I was explaining, the further into the decay process it goes, the less likely it will be for remineralization to occur. And thus the further it advances, the more implausible it is to reverse decay. So decay can be reversed. In fact, you're almost always reversing a little bit of the decay if it starts in the early process. Most of the time the decay is halfway through the enamel, it becomes virtually irreversible unless extreme changes in oral hygiene are made. And even then, most of the time it just slows down how fast the decay progresses. So that is why a lot of dentists will do fillings once the decay has gotten halfway through the enamel. I personally wait a little bit longer. My favorite floss and brush are in the description. Like and subscribe if you have teeth and watch my best daily brushing and flossing video now.